Hello everyone, we're back with our fourth part at our quick look at what happened over the first three days of free agency. We'll look at the Atlanta division today and see what happened in that division over the first three days of free agency. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Intent Hockey Channel. Before we get into this video, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe down below. Thank you for your support. We're able to help you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe button down below. And don't forget to comment down in the comment section below. So let's see how video. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Atlanta Division. We've looked at the other three divisions earlier on. It's like previous videos. So we're going to be looking at the Atlanta Division, looking at what happened. The first, uh, potentially some of the things that happened on 30th 2 to the 3rd. So some interesting things happened for this division. So we'll start with the Boston Bruins. They made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 signings on July. July 1st. A couple of smaller ones, a couple of big ones. We'll get to the smaller ones first. Uh, they sent Max Jones to a two-year, $1 million AAV deal to be a solid bottom 6 for them. That's a pretty good pickup there for them. Uh, they sent Jordan Osterley to a two-year league minimum deal. Should be a solid 6th, 7th defense for him. Was last year in Calgary. Uh, then they sent Cole Kopik, who was over in Tampa last year, to a one-year league minimum deal. Should be a call-up option. Bill Sweezy, they sent to a two-year league minimum deal, as well as Jeffrey Veal. Both are probably going to be AHL players who could be call-up options. Then you have Riley Tuff, who had a one-year league minimum deal. Could be a spare forward, could be a call-up option. So not exactly sure which way he'll go, but that's another good depth addition there for the Bruins. And then they send their two big players. They send Nikita Zadorov to a six-year, $5 million AAV deal and Elias Lindholm to a seven-year, $7.75 million AAV deal. So two guys who are, have some pretty decent playoff runs in Vancouver. Lindholm's a solid second-line center. Most teams in Boston, he'll be a top-line center. Uh, Zadorov's a really good second-pair potentially defensive, but I think in Boston he may be more of a third pair of guys so interesting things here for Boston I think they did get a little bit better especially on the uh, roster given the fact they add Zadorov they add a Lindholm they now have a great first line center they now have a solid decor with Zadorov being added to them but they did lose Allmark this offseason so I think they did improve they did subtract a little bit too so I'm not going to say how much more better I think they are this year so interesting stuff there for Boston but they definitely did improve at least a little bit uh, going over to Buffalo Sabres uh, they made a handful of signings, including 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on free agency day. Uh, so first, they wound up signing Felix Sandstrom, one-year two-way deal, $775,000. He should be the new third string with Comrie now gone. Uh, they signed Mason Jobs, one-year league minimum deal, should be a AHL player. Uh, they sent Nicholas Abuki Bell, one-year, one-way, $1.5 million deal, should be a solid bomb six forward for them. They sent Jason Zucker to a one-year $5 million deal, uh, should be a decent middle six forward there for the Sabres a solid veteran too. They signed Jack Rathbone, one year league minimum. Should be a decent player there for the Sabres potentially the AHL level. Uh, they signed Brett Murray back on a one-year league minimum deal. They signed Sam Lafferty, who plays in the bottom six, two-year, $2 million deal. That should be a really good pickup there. Uh, they signed Joshua Dune, two-year league minimum deal. Shouldn't be that bad of a deal. Then they also signed defenseman Dennis Gilbert and Jacob Bryson on one-year deals. Gilbert, eight twenty-five thousand dollars AAV. Bryson, $900,000 AAV. Uh, so this was some pretty good additions there for the Sabres. Now, I don't think they've really improved much, given all those facts, but I do think they got a tiny bit better. I mean, Ang Zucker to bomb six, Abuki Bell to bomb six, Lafferty to bomb six, getting some more defensive help with Bryson and Gilbert. It's not overly bad off season, but given where they are in the rebuild and where they need to be making the playoffs next year, this is a little bit of a lackluster performance so far this off season. So definitely don't think they got a whole bunch better, uh, but maybe marginally. So interesting stuff there for Buffalo. Uh, going over to Detroit Red Wings, they made some interesting moves over the time frame. Uh, on June 30th, they wound up bringing back Patrick Kane, day before free he started signing to a one-year $4 million deal that could be $6.5 million if he hits some signing bonuses. Uh, some interesting stuff there for the Red Wings. Then on July 1st, they signed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. Uh, so interesting stuff there for the Detroit. They got Joe Snively, one-year league minimum deal. Snively is a really good call-up option potentiality there. So really good stuff there for the Detroit. They sent Sheldon Drives on a two-year deal with AV of league minimum. That's another pretty good solid call-up option there for the Detroit. Uh, they sent Christian Fisher again, one-year $1.125 million deal. Should be a solid bomb, 6-4. They signed uh, Will Lagiston, one-year league minimum deal. Uh, he should be a solid call-up option on the defensive side. And then they also signed two goaltenders. Cam Talbot to a two-year deal with AV of $2.5 million. And Jack Campbell to a one-year deal with a, a league minimum AAV. So Campbell should be the third stringer. Talbot should be a tandem partner. I still think the Red Wings are going to make some sort of a move to move off a of goaltender. So we shall wait and see. But interesting stuff there so far as the Red Wings definitely improved their situation a little bit. Then on July 2nd, they signed Tyler Mott, one-year 
year and just thousand dollar deal should be a bomb six forward and then on july 3rd they signed vladimir tarasenko two-year deal 4.75 million dollar av it's a really good pickup there for the red wings to get tarasenko so interesting stuff there for the red wings to get some of these guys signed so i, I do think they got maybe a tiny bit better i mean they kept kane uh, they still have to send some of the rfas but uh their defense looks questionable i mean they have eric gustafson now instead of shane goss that is a little bit of a downgrade the four group they lost a guy like daniel sprong they lost a guy like david perron they replaced them with guys like tarasenko and they kept fisher and they also got mott so they did all right i don't think they did fantastic but they definitely did all right and i think they might have improved slightly uh but they do still have a lot of goaltending problems i'm not sure if a talbot who so lie on tandem whichever ones they go with will wind up being enough to cut it to make it to the playoffs next year so i think they may have gotten a tiny bit better but not very much i think talbot might be a better backup goaltender than rhymers but still I'm not exactly sure how much better this team got this year. Uh, going over to the Florida Panthers, uh, they lost a lot of players because they were the team who came away from winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, on June 30th, they signed Sam Reinhart, eight-year deal with AV of $8.625 million. So they kept Reinhardt around, which was fantastic. He was one of the top players on the free agent board. Uh, so interesting stuff there. Then they signed one, two, three, four, five, six players on July 1st. Uh, only depth players. They brought back Kuliakov on a four your deal with AV of $1.15 million. So that's pretty good news there for the Panthers. Uh, then they bring in Tomasz Nosek on a one-year league minimum deal. They bring in Jesper Bolkvist on a one-year league minimum deal. They bring in AJ Greer on a two-year deal with AV of $850,000. And they bring back Krasny Sassel on a one-year league minimum deal. Those guys are all players who could potentially play in the bottom six. I think Greer should definitely be able to play in the bottom six as Nosek. And I think Bolkvist and uh, Asplund could potentially do that too. And then they also bring in Chris Drieger back after a short stint in Seattle. Trigger gets a one-year deal with AV $195,000 to be a team third stringer, so it's a pretty good pickup there for Florida. Uh, then on July 2nd, they sent two players, Nate Schmidt, to a one-year $800,000 deal to be a solid third, second pair of defensemen. And McKenzie and Whistle, who should once again challenge for a bomb sex role, one-year league minimum. And then they extended Anton Lundell on July 3rd, six-year deal, $5 million AV, so he looked pretty good there for the Panthers, and that's a really good sign in there for Florida. So in my opinion, not an overly great offseason. I mean, they lost OEL, they lost Montour, I think they lost a couple of depth forwards on the forward group, they lost Stellars, so they definitely took a little bit of a hit, but I think they did all right. They add Entwistle, they add Schmidt, they add Greer, they add Kulikov, they add Nosik, keep around Sam Reinhardt, so all in all, I don't think they improved a whole bunch this offseason, but I don't think they got too much worse, which is always what happens with teams who make the playoffs. They just don't want to see them get too much worse. I mean, look at last year. Vegas really didn't do much on trying to add pieces, and all they did was move on from Riley Smith. So, like I said, they still got worse, but it's still a pretty good team, and expect them to do really well next year. So, interesting stuff there for Florida. Next, we're going over to Montreal Canadiens. That they have not done a whole bunch. On June 30th, they made one small move, moving Kovacevic to New Jersey Devils in exchange for a 2026 fourth rounder. It was a pretty good move there for the Canadiens, given the fact that they really need to make some uh, moves and try and move off a defenseman, and they did with Kovacevic. Uh, then on July 1st, they made two signings. That's the only signings they made over that three-day period. Uh, they wound up signing Alex Barboulay, one-year league minimum, should be a solid bomb, six forward, or a call-up option there for the Canadiens. And then they extended Yari Slavkovsky. Slavkovsky, who was entering a final year of his ELC, gets an eight-year extension with a view of $7.6 million. So it's a pretty good pickup there for the Canadiens to get Slavkovsky on an eight-year extension. And I think that should be a really good pickup there for the Canadiens. But that's all they did. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't do much, that there was some talk with them moving off a couple more defensemen, some more veteran forwards, uh, some other things that they could wind up moving, but they don't wind up doing any of that. They also wind up adding pieces, so you can't really say they won, but I also can't really say they lost because they didn't really do anything that really warned them losing the free agency period so far, so I think they're sort of neutral at this point. Uh, if you go to Ottawa Senators, they did a couple of things. Uh, on July 1st, they made a small trade. Uh, they moved Jacob Chikrin to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Nick Jensen in a 2026 third rounder. It's definitely an underwhelming return given what they had to give up for Chikrin, uh, but they do get a solid top four right shot defenseman in Jensen, who can really help be a solid defensive defenseman. They also get a 2026 third rounder, so helps a little bit on the draft capital, even though they have to give up Chikrin for it. And then a day later, they wound up moving Matthew Joseph in a 2025 third rounder to the Blues in exchange for future considerations, so they clear up some cap space, which was really good for them. They're able to get a little bit more cap flexibility. They also get Nick Jensen, so interesting stuff there for the 
since. Then on July 1st, they made one, two, three, four, five signings. Uh, they signed David Perron to a two year deal with a of $4 million. That should be a really good deal for them. Perron's a solid middle six forward. They get Jeremy Davies, who gets a one year league minimum deal on the defensive end. Pallon, who gets a two year deal league minimum on the forward group. Both should be AHL players who are call up options. Then they get Michael Amadio, who gets a three year deal with AV of $2.6 million. Amadio is a pretty good third, maybe fourth line forward, so that's a pretty good solid sign there for the Sens, maybe a little bit of an overpayment. And then they said Noah Gregor on a one-year deal with AV of $850,000. So, it's pretty good moves there for the Senators. I mean, they lost Sarasenko to the deadline, they lost Kubalik, uh, they wound up bringing in guys like Perron, Amadio, Gregor to help fill out that bomb six. They also bring in Olmark earlier on, uh, so they bring in Jensen to replace Chikrin as much as the return is not overly great. I think Jensen might be the sort of fit that this team needs. So all in all, I think they did really good on the free agency day. Then on July 2nd, they signed four players. Uh, Philip Bruce, they get on a one-year league minimum deal. Hayden Hodgson, they get on a one-year league minimum deal. Uh, Adam Gaudet, they get on a one-year league minimum deal. All those are probably the of players who are call-up options. And then they extend Shane Pinto, who is an RFA. Two-year deal, $3.75 million AAV. So pretty good stuff there for the sense to get Pinto locked up. And then they, on the third, they signed Matthew Andonoff to a three-year ELC with a view of interest of $63,000. So all in all, I think the Sens definitely did improve. I mean, the Allmark move was fantastic for them. I think as much as the Chicken move was definitely not overly great, they did improve a little bit on the defensive end. Uh, again, Jensen, who I think might be a little bit more well-rounded for that team. And I think adding some more players in the bottom six like Perron and Amadio and Gregor could be a really good pickup there for Sanders. So some interesting stuff there for Ottawa. But I definitely think they got at least a little bit better and it might be enough to push them back to a playoff spot. Uh, going over over to the Tampa Bay Lightning. They made a couple moves on June 30th. They moved Ben and MacArthur to Pittsburgh in exchange for Svechkovsky from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, they then also acquired Jake Ensel's signing rights from Carolina in exchange for 2025 third round picks. So they made a couple of small moves. Then on June 30th, they also signed Jake Gensel's seven year deal, $9 million AAV. So he's going to be the new top six forward with Stamkos now gone. Uh, so then on July 1st, they signed five players. Uh, Yessi Alona gets a one year league minimum deal. Derek Puglia, one year league minimum deal. Steven Santini, one year league minimum deal. Toby Pesquet Bisson, one year league minimum deal. And then they also signed Zemgis Jurgensen on a three year deal with the AV of $150,000. So Jurgensen should be a solid bomb six forward. As should the alone in, while Pouliot, Santini, and Bisson should all be AHL players to be call up options. So interesting stuff there for Tampa. And they sent three players on July 2nd. And they extended Lilberg, two year deal, $100,000. Actual 12 decently as like a third pair of defenseman last year. So pretty good pickup there for Tampa. Uh, they sent Atkinson on a one year $100,000 deal. So he should be a solid bomb six forward there. And then they extend Victor Hedman on a four-year extension with the AV of $8 million. He was going to take final year of his deal. That's a pretty good pickup there for the Bolts to extend Victor Hedman. So interesting stuff there. But definitely, I, I'm not exactly sure if they've really improved much. I mean, they extend Hedman, that's good. They get some more bomb six additions with Atkinson and Gjergensen, which is also good. But I mean, they move on from Sergachev. They bring in McDonough. They move on from Stamkos. They bring in Gensel as much as Gensel's really good, as much as McDonough's really good. Are they a whole bunch better than they were last year? I can't really say that with a whole bunch of certainty. So, interesting moves there for the Bolts, but I can't really say they've gotten better. Uh, I know they've definitely gotten a little bit younger, but I can't really say they've gotten better at this point. Uh, going over to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They made a handful of signings on June 30th. Uh, they signed two players, including Timothy Logan, two-year deal, $3 million AAV. Pretty good, decent deal there. He's going to need to step up his game, though, after not having an overly great season. Then they have Max Domi, who had four years at $3.75 million. To get him under four is fantastic. He should continue to be a solid middle six forward. Uh, on July 1st, they signed one, two, three, four, five, six players as well. They signed goaltender Matt Murray to a one-year deal with AAV of $75,000 to be their third stringer. They sent Anthony Stellar to a two year deal with a view of two and a half million dollars to be their uh, tandem partner for Joseph Wall. And then they extended Joseph Wall, who's entering the final year, his deal on a three year deal with a view of $3.66 million. That should be good as long as he can stay healthy. So interesting goal that moves there for the Leafs. They also bring in Oliver Ekman Larson on a four year deal with a view of three and a half million dollars. So pretty good move there for the Leafs. Uh, they bring Chris Tanov on a surprising six year deal with a view of four and a half million dollars. Should be a top pair of defensemen there, but six years when he's already 34 is 
quite long term of a deal. And they bring Yanni Hakapa, who gets a two year deal with AV of one and a half million dollars. Should be a solid physical uh, third player offensive that they had in the Ilya Bushkin that they lost. So interesting stuff there for Toronto. Then they signed three players on July 2nd, including Dakota Murmurs on a one year aluminum deal. Felipe Myers on a one year aluminum deal. Could be depth additions, could be sevens defensemen, could be call up options. So interesting pickups there for the Leafs. And then they also signed Cedric Pere to a one year aluminum deal. Should be an NHL player. So interesting signs there for the Leafs. I do think they got definitely a bit better. I think Solaris is a little bit better than Samsonov, even though he's a little bit untested as like a tandem partner. I think the additions of Tanev, Hakampa, and OEL really strengthened that blue line. Didn't make too many moves on the four group. Did lose a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi, so not overly great and overly ideal on the four group, but still, I think this team looks a little bit better than they did last year. Wouldn't be surprised if they maybe went and took a little bit of a deeper playoff run. So interesting stuff there for the Leafs. I really do like what they've done so far, and I think they definitely got a little bit better. So that's all I'm going to talk about for today in the Atlantic division i'd love to hear your thoughts uh, for me just to recap i think boston got a tiny bit better but i can't say got a whole bunch better after the loss of allmark i think buffalo might have got marginally better as well but they only add some bomb six forwards this year i think the red wings got a little bit better uh but i still have question marks about that goaltending uh and i think they still need to move a goaltender uh for florida they definitely got a little bit worse but not too much worse which is really good for them for the canadians they really didn't do a whole bunch of anything uh for the senators they were able to get a little bit uh better by adding allmark getting some more forward help uh, moving chicken for jensen i think the bolts might have gotten a little bit better but really if them losing circuit and stamp how much better is that team and for the maple leafs i think they got a little bit better too but i'm not exactly sure how much they'll really improve this season so we'll have to wait and see but i think the least they get better i think the bolts i'm not exactly sure if they got better or worse i think the sense got a little bit better i'm not sure if the canadians got better or worse i think the uh panthers got a little bit worse i think the red wings might have gotten a little bit better i think the Sabres might have gotten a little bit better and i think the Bruins might have gotten a little bit better but not really any clear who really took a step forward this uh, free agency period so interesting stuff there but i'd love to hear your guys thoughts on all this down in the comment section below what do you think about this who do you think got better who do you think got worse definitely love to hear your thoughts on all that down in the comment section below so i'm going to talk about for today until this video and if you like to remember, subscribe down below thank you for your support we're nearly to you guys so if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe button down below don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below so i'll discuss today's video also the blog to my news members and also stuff if you ask them to check that out leave a link in the description below and kind of see you guys all for the next video see you guys soon